As we continue our lessons and discussions on circles, in this lesson we're going to be looking at what are called inscribed angles. Now, as you can see in the diagram here, an inscribed angle is one that has all three of its points on the edges of the circle. And our inscribed angle theorem, theorem 1211, talks about the angle measurement of this relationship. The measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. So in the diagram that is shown, we would have that the measure of angle B is one half the measure of arc AC. And the way that works is, as you know, the full measurement of a complete circle is 360 degrees. So as we move around the edge or the circumference of the circle, we've actually traced out a portion of that 360. So we can find relationships that exist in that amount. So let's use that in the diagrams below to find the missing values. For instance, in this circle on the left, we have A and B that are both missing. Well, A is the measure of arc PT, and measure of angle PQT is 60 degrees. Well, according to this inscribed angle theorem, that is half of that arc. So, the measure of angle A or measure of arc A is 120 degrees. Then using that along with the 30 degrees that's given here for arc TS, angle B intercepts both of those. So 120 plus 30 is 150. Measure of angle B is going to be half of that 150. So the measure of angle B is 75 degrees. So as you can see, we can begin looking at different relationships that exist and fill in all the parts that remain with them. So as we move through, other relationships will also come up. There are three corollaries that go along with this inscribed angle theorem. The first corollary, as shown in the far left diagram here, says that if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then they're congruent. You can see that angle A here and angle B both intercept this, sec this arc out here. Because they intercept the same arc, they would be congruent. So, measure of angle A, right, A is equal to the measure of angle B. Next, the second corollary is that an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. As you can see, angle C here intercepts this diameter, which means that it's half of the circle, 180 degrees. That makes angle C a right angle. And the third corollary is that opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle are supplementary because angle D intercepts arc ABC and then angle B would intercept arc ADC because they intercept uh, arcs that make up the full circle and they are half of the, those values they would have to be half of a circle which is 180 degrees and supplementary. Now using those facts let's work on finding the measures of the four angles down below. As you can see we have angles 1, 2, 3, and 4 and we need to find all of their values. So we have measure of angle 1, measure of angle 2, the measure of angle 3, and the measure of angle 4 that we all need to find. Using the second corollary that if it intercepts a semicircle we have 180 degrees, well angle 1 and angle 3 both intercept those semicircles. 
So the measure of angle 1 would have to be 90 degrees, and the measure of angle 3 would also be 90 degrees. Next, I believe it would be easiest to find the measure of angle 4, because the measure of angle 4 intercepts this 60 degree arc and this 80 degree arc. 60 plus 80 is 140, and angle 4 is going to be half of that, so the measure of angle 4 is 70 degrees. Now, we can uh, go about this next part a number of ways. One is to add all these together and subtract from 180. The other would be to finish finding the pieces of the circle. Well, if we know that along this semicircle it's 180 degrees and the arc from 1 to 2 is 60, that means the remaining part would be 120. And using the same arguments, if this part of the arc is 80, then the remaining part between angles 3 and 4 on the arc would have to be 100 degrees. Angle 2 is inscribed in such a way that it intersects the sum of those two. So that's 220 degrees, and taking half of 220, we end up with angle, the measure of angle 2 being 110 degrees. So now that we're starting to work with inscribed figures, we can get some more developments in these concepts and find angles in new, new ways. But what happens when we have an angle that moves all the way around the circle to where it becomes one of the legs becomes tangent to the circle itself? And as tangent, we create a chord inside and then a tangent line outside. Let's take a look at that. There's a theorem 1212 which talks about this and it reads. The measure of an angle formed by a tangent line and a chord is half the measure of the intercepted arc. So just as with an inscribed angle being half of the intercepted arc, the tangent and chord combination do the same thing. So in the diagram on the left, we have line SR, which is tangent to the circle at point Q, and arc PMQ is 212 degrees we need to find the measure of angle PQR. Well, in order to do this, let's first find PQS. We know from theorem 1212 that this is going to be half of the intercepted arc. That arc is 212 degrees, which means that the angle formed at PQS will be half of that, or 106 degrees couple ways of going about it from here, we can either finish out our circle of 360 and take half of it, or we can find the supplement of 106. Well, the supplement of 106 is 74 degrees, and the finishing out our circle from 212 would give us a measurement of 148 degrees. Well, half of 148 is 74. So to end the question, the measure of angle PQR is 74 degrees. Either way, so multiple ways of coming out to our same solution. Next, in the diagram on the right, we have two missing angles. We have angle Y and angle X that we need to find the values of. Well, we know from one of our corollaries that this angle here is 90 degrees because it intercepts a semicircle. And finishing out the triangle, 90 and 35, the measure of angle Y would have to be 55 degrees. Next, let's take a look at the measure of angle X. X is tucked in here at LJK, which is a tangent ray from KJ 
and a chord, JL. Well, the arc that's intercepted for those two is the same as the arc intercepted by angle JQL, which means that they have the same measurement. So the measure of angle X is also 35 degrees right along with the original angle we were given. So we were able to find both angles that we were searching for. So a couple of new theorems and ideas, three corollaries in this lesson, all talking about these inscribed angles, um, the relationships with triangles, and also other shapes such as quadrilaterals. Make sure you have these ideas down and ready to use them as we move out and forward from here.